introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Douglas Miller. Since 1996, Douglas is the historic site administrator of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission at Pennsbury, Maryland. The site consists of 24 structures on 43 acres and has 20 paid staff members and 150 volunteers. He has an MS in History from Indiana University of Pennsylvania and a Bachelor of Arts in History from Bloomsburg University. A renowned history buff in his own right, and what better person to have here tonight? So please welcome Mr. Douglas Miller. Doug? Can you guys all hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm going to start out by throwing you for a loop. Larry's going to give me the eyeball here, but Norman Bates. Anyone ever hear the name? Yeah. At the end of this presentation, you'll know it in a different context. There are images of the American flag that are burned into our national psyche. We as Americans, when I mention them, will all recognize these images. One of them has to do with the museum that I'm currently charged with, George Washington crossing the Delaware. That heroic image, he's in the boat, and right behind him is somebody holding the Betsy Ross flag. I will argue that without that image, we would not have the part that we have today. Because if you talk to a veteran who fought in Normandy, he doesn't say, I crossed the channel. He said, I was in Normandy, I fought on D-Day. At Washington's crossing, the veterans who were there bragged about being with Washington at Trenton, not crossing the Delaware River. Another image that you'll all recognize, the, the Marines raising the flag on Mount Sarabachi. Everyone knows that image. It is one of the most heroic images in American history. I had the privilege as a college intern to work with a security guard at the State Museum who was a Marine on Mount Sarabachi at that time. No, he was not one of the flag raisers, but at an anniversary date of that flag raising, he took me aside and told me what it was like to be there. And I will always remember that. As a Boy Scout, my Scoutmaster was a veteran of the China Burma India Theater. He left home in 1942 and did not set foot back in the United States until 1946. Jack was a hero of mine. Another image that especially those of us that are a bit older will recognize young John F. Kennedy saluting the flag-draped casket of his father, who was assassinated while in office. Most everyone recognizes the image of the firemen who raised the flag over the smoldering ruins of the Twin Towers in 2001. Now, I originally, as a historian, set out to research the history of the flag and so on, but there have been books and books and books written. So I pulled a few little snippets out as I went. We all think of the first flag as the Betsy Ross flag. There were actually two standards before that. Some historians argue that in 1775, a seamstress in Philadelphia actually put together the first flag for a ship of the line named the Alfred. It was just alternating red and white stripes. One of the problems was it was almost identical to a British flag that was being used by the East India Company at the time. Shortly thereafter, in New Year's 1776, George Washington declared that the Grand Union flag which is very similar to our American flag, the British Union Jack up in the corner would be our first national flag. I would argue that's probably correct because after that point, there was a declaration of independence and we had declared ourselves a nation. Within a year of that date, Betsy Ross has given credit for the American flag with the circle of 13 stars. The truth is many women produced that flag. Betsy gets the credit. That was the flag that Congress declared would be our national standard at that point. It was not the flag that crossed the Delaware with George Washington that fateful night. For decades, and then scores of years, and then centuries after that, Congress has changed our flag. We've added stars. We've reduced the number of stripes. We've worked things out. It was actually Eisenhower 
who made the last change to a 50-star flag for us. But I wanted to tell the story of some of the men who carried the flag and some of them who died for the flag. In December 12, 1862, at Fredericksburg, a corporal and a lieutenant both died carrying the flag of their country forward. They were with the Massachusetts unit. A lieutenant, John Adams, ran forward, seized up both flags from those fallen men, rallied his troops, and stabilized the line. Through enemy fire, he did this. For that act, he won the Congressional Medal of Honor. In May of 1863, Thomas Custer captured an enemy flag and was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for taking a foe's national flag from him. That wasn't good enough for Lieutenant Custer because, again, at Sailor's Creek, he charged his horse into enemy earthworks, jumping them, was severely, nearly mortally wounded doing it, yet managed to wrestle two enemy battle standards from the enemy before bringing the rest of his troops in and capturing the position. For both of those acts, he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor as one of the few men to win it twice. Now back to Norman Bates. No, not the psycho from the Hitchcock thriller, but Norman Bates in 1865 came forward against enemy troops, held at gunpoint with his rifled musket an enemy flag bearer and captured the enemy standard. When his own standard bearer was mortally wounded, he seized the flag and stabilized the Union line. For that, Norman Bates won the Congressional Medal of Honor. I chose to talk a little bit about Civil War veterans because we are on the threshold of the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War. It remains the bloodiest conflict when you look at the number of soldiers who fell and the number of soldiers we could put forward as a nation. This past weekend, I was at Antietam. Antietam is the bloodiest day in American history. More American men lost their lives in a single day at Antietam than has occurred before or since. Flag Day, we remember those that served under the flag. We remember their symbolism. We remember those that fell for the flag. Today our troops are in battle in the longest conflict that we have had troops engaged in in American history. It is an isolated conflict. Many of us know men and women who have served or are currently serving. Those of you that don't, please remember them. Many of them wear on their shoulder a small American flag. Most of those flags are subdued so that the enemy can't see them. In World War II, our paratroopers wore the American flag on their shoulder. Let's remember all the policemen, the firemen, the EMTs, the first responders, the troops, the government employees, the scouts, who all wear the flag on their uniform and do so proudly. They all serve our nation. I hope that here, not just on Flag Day, we'll think about this, but I hope that all of you will consider making every day Flag Day. With that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Doug, for your inspiring remarks. Uh, I'd like to introduce a couple of people here that uh, have chosen to come here to honor us. Dan Fraley, he's the County Director of Veterans Affairs. And Dan, you were slated to say a couple of words if you'd like to. Not here yet. We'll give you a minute or so. And uh, a lot of you remember Michael Fitzpatrick, former Congressman, former County Commissioner. 